I.A. Richards was an influential English literary critic and rhetorician. He was educated at Clifton College and Magdalen College, Cambridge, where his love of English was nurtured by the scholar Charles Hickson, Cowby, Spence. His books, especially The Meaning of Meaning, Principles of Literary Criticism, Practical Criticism, and The Philosophy of Rhetoric, proved to be founding influences for the new criticism. The concept of practical criticism led in time to the practices of close reading. What is often thought of as the beginning of modern literary criticism, Richards is regularly considered one of the founders of the contemporary study of literature in English. Biographical Sketch Beginnings Richards began his career without formal training in literature at all. He studied philosophy at Cambridge University. This may have led to one of Richards' assertions for the shape of literary study in the 20th century, that literary study cannot and should not be undertaken as a specialization in itself, but instead studied alongside a cognate field. Richard's earliest teaching appointments were in the equivalent of what might be called adjunct faculty positions. Magdalen College at Cambridge would not pay a salary to Richards to teach the new and untested field of English literature. Instead, Richards collected tuition directly from the students as they entered the classroom each week. In 1926 he married Dorothy Pilly Richards, whom he had met on a climbing holiday in Wales. Contributions. Richard's life and influence can be divided into periods, which correspond roughly to his intellectual interests. In many of these achievements, Richard's found a collaborator in C. K. Ogden. Collaboration with Ogden and assessment of Richard's work and biography requires mention of C. K. Ogden, collaborator on three of the most important projects of Richard's life and work. In Foundations of Aesthetics, Richards maps out the principles of aesthetic reception which lay at the root of his literary theory. Additionally, the structure of the work prefigures his work on multiple definition in Coleridge on imagination, in Basic Rules of Reason and in Mentius on the Mind, in The Meaning of Meaning, a study of the influence of language upon thought and of the science of symbolism, Richards and Ogden work out the triadic theory of semiotics which, in its dependence on psychological theories, prefigures the importance of psychology in Richard's independently authored literary criticism. Additionally, many current semioticians salute this work as a vast improvement on the dyadic semiotics of Sousha. Finally, in works like the General Basic English Dictionary and Times of India Guide to Basic English, Richards and Ogden developed their most internationally influential project, the Basic English Programme for the Development of an International Language Based with an 850-word vocabulary. Richards' own travels, especially to China, made him an effective advocate for this international program. At Harvard, he took the next step, integrating new media into his international pedagogy. Aesthetics and Literary Criticism Works The Foundations of Aesthetics, co-authored with C. K. Ogden and James Wood, second edition with revised preface, The Principles of Literary Criticism, subsequent editions. London 1926, New York 1926, 1928, Science and Poetry. A reset edition was published in the same year in New York by W. W. Norton, 1926. Second edition, revised and enlarged. Keegan Paul, Trench, Trubner, London, 1935. There is no known U.S. publication of the second edition, however the text of the 1935 edition was reset, with her preface, commentary, and an additional essay, How Does a Poem Know When It Is Finished, as Poetries and Sciences, Practical Criticism, Subsequent Editions, 1930, Coleridge on Imagination, Later Editions, NY and London 1950, Bloomington 1960, Speculative Instruments, So Much Nearer, Essays Toward a World English, includes the important essay, The Future of Poetry. Theory Richards is often labelled as the father of the new criticism, largely because of the influence of his first two books of critical theory. 
the principles of literary criticism and a practical criticism. Principles was a major critical breakthrough, offering 35 insightful chapters regarding various topics relevant to literary criticism, including form, value, rhythm, coanesthesia, literary infectiousness, elusiveness, divergent readings, and belief. His next book, Practical Criticism, was just as influential as an empirical study of inferior literary response. Richards removed authorial and contextual information from 13 poems, including one by Longfellow and four by decidedly marginal poets. Then he assigned their interpretation to undergraduates at Cambridge University to ascertain the most likely impediments to an adequate response. This approach had a startling impact at the time in demonstrating the depth and variety of misreadings to be expected of otherwise intelligent college students as well as the population at large. In using this method, Richards did not advance a new hermeneutic. Instead, he was doing something unprecedented in the field of literary studies. He was interrogating the interpretive process itself by analyzing the self-reported interpretive work of students. To that end, his work necessitated a closer interpretation of the literary text in and of itself and provided what seems a historical opening to the work done in English education and composition, Flower and Hayes, as they engage empirical studies. Connected with this effort were his seminal theories of metaphor, value, tone, stock response, incipient action, pseudo-statement, and ambiguity. The latter is expounded by William Empson, his former graduate student. I.A. Richards thought literary criticism was too abstract and impressionistic. He wanted to make literary criticism have precision like a science. Richards also wanted to examine the psychological process of writing and reading poetry. Richards believed that if we read poetry and can make sense of it, in the degree in which we can order ourselves, we need nothing more. Readers don't have to fully believe the things they are reading to understand poetry, since poetry's importance comes from the emotions it causes. New rhetoric Richards believed that the old form of rhetoric study was too much about arguments and conflicts. He thought rhetoric should be a study of the meaning of parts of discourse, a study of misunderstanding and its remedies. He gave his idea the term new rhetoric, which is about how language works. He said ambiguity is expected and meanings are not inherent to words but in how they are perceived by others. Meanings are decided by how words are used in a sentence. Feed forward at the age of 75, Richards was approached by the Saturday Review to write a piece for their What I Have Learned series. Richards surprisingly took this opportunity to expound upon his lesser-known concept of feed forward. According to Richards, feed forward is the concept of anticipating the effect of one's words by acting as our own critic. It is thought to work in the opposite direction of feedback, though it works essentially towards the same goal, to clarify unclear concepts existing in all forms of communication. Feed forward acts as a pretest that any writer can use to anticipate the impact of their words on their audience. According to Richards, feed forward allows the writer to then engage with their text to make necessary changes to create a better effect. He believes that communicators who do not use feed forward will seem dogmatic. Richards wrote more in depth about the idea and importance of feed forward in communication in his book Speculative Instruments and has claimed that feed forward was his most important learned concept. Influence Richards served as mentor and teacher to other prominent critics, most notably William Empson and F. R. Levis. Though Levis was contemporary with Richards, Empson much younger. Other critics primarily influenced by his writings also included Cleanth Brooks and Alan Tate. Later critics who refined the formalist approach to new criticism by actively rejecting his psychological emphasis included, besides Brooks and Tate, John Crow Ransom, K. Wimsatt, P. Blackmer, and Murray Krieger, R.S. Crane of the Chicago School was both indebted to Richards's theory and critical of its psychological assumptions. 
They all admitted the value of his seminal ideas but sought to salvage what they considered his most useful assumptions from the theoretical excesses they felt he brought to bear in his criticism. Like Hempson, Richards proved a difficult model for the new critics, but his model of close reading provided the basis for their interpretive methodology. According to the OED, Richards coined the term feed-forward in 1951 at the 8th Annual Macy Conferences on Cybernetics and hence Richards's influence extended to cybernetics which makes liberal use of the term feed-forward. One of Richards's most famous students was Marshall McLuhan, who also made use of the notion of feed-forward, rhetoric, semiotics and prose interpretation works The Meaning of Meaning, a study of the influence of language upon thought and of the science of symbolism, co-authored with C. K. Ogden, with an introduction by J. P. Postgate, and supplementary essays by Bronislaw Malinowski, The Problem of Meaning in Primitive Languages, and F. G. Cruikshank, The Importance of a Theory of Signs and a Critique of Language in the Study of Medicine, London and New York, 1923, first, 1923, second, 1927, third, 1934, 1936 5th, 1938 8th, 1946 NY, 1989 Mencius on the Mind, Experiments in Multiple Definition, Basic Rules of Reason, The Philosophy of Rhetoric, Interpretation in Teaching, Subsequent Editions, 1973, Basic in Teaching, East and West, How to Read a Page, a course in effective reading, with an introduction to a hundred great words. Subsequent editions. 1959. The Wrath of Achilles. The Iliad of Homer, shorten and in a new translation. So much nearer. Essays toward a world English. Includes the important essay, The Future of Poetry. Complementarities. Uncollected Essays, ed. by John Paul Russo. Times of India Guide to Basic English, 1938, Ogin, C.K., and Richards, I.A.